to Chris, um, kind of as always, this training is going to be recorded. So um, if you have any questions and you want it to remain anonymous and or you don't want people to know that you're talking about yourself, uh, we just ask that you keep everything hypothetical or you just kind of prefer to like, hey, asking for a friend or, you know, like a friend or someone I know mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. So, because um, again, this is going to be recorded and posted on Litmus. So just as a heads up. So with that being said, um, I'll hand it over and start the recording now. Hey, Governor. Uh, and again, if you have anything, I always like to start off with serious about fitness at gmail is my email if you want to send it there and of course when we get to the chat part i'll see all that stuff and i try my best not to name drop as well um want to introduce myself for those of you that don't know me there's a handful of people that do know me and so they're very used to my bad jokes um and and misbehavior let's just call a spade a spade um but I, I never try to offend people it's always with uh, good humor and fun um my name is chris duran i uh am the talking rain personal trainer uh, been that way since 2009. I've been doing percent body fat testing out there uh, since then. We do have a witness on the call today. Um, and we'll talk about percent body fat testing soon. I am a biochemistry major with kinesiology and biomechanical analysis. I'm a movement person. Um, why am I saying that? I am not a certified uh, or registered dietitian, uh, but I have taken uh, every class on human anatomy and physiology and I'm 43, I've been training for 25 years. So I come to you guys with lots of journals that I've read. Um, my, my side bedroom stuff is journals on American uh, College of Sports Medicine and National Strength and Condition Association. Those are the things that I read when I'm on the plane or I'm going to bed. And I take all that information and then I work with the 90% of the population. I work with people that pay their own bills. I work with people that don't have a lot of uh, predispositions um, so I get the people that work out and they have maybe 30 minutes to an hour to themselves per day. They have a job, they have a wife, they have a son and daughter and, and they want to make a physical change. And so they don't have enough time. I work with those people. I don't work with the elites or the, uh, the predispositions. And it's not because I don't want to. I just don't attract that type of personality. Um, work hard, play hard, enjoy life. And with what time you have, let's make the best of it. So today's topic. And maybe you watched uh, the, the videos, if you watched videos of the macronutrients, that maybe helps a little bit just to know who I am when we talk about proteins and carbos and fats, macronutrients. But today's topic is fit versus fat. Okay, it's actually a huge debate in my world. Uh, and I have given this conversation or this presentation 30 times. And I asked the question, and it's really fun to have a room in front of you and you can see everybody's reaction. Have you ever seen a fat person finish a marathon? Fat. Like, oh, you know, yeah, they can lose some weight. Yes, a fat person can run a marathon. A fat person can finish a marathon. And I want to start by right now when I say the word fat. I'm sorry if it comes out like, like emphatically. I want to talk about fat as a biological thing, not a look, not a feel, okay? A biological thing. So when I say fat, I'm referring to fat on the body, biological, okay? Have you ever seen a fat person sprint? 100 meter dash, 200 meter dash, 50 meter sprint in the pool, right? No. Now, why is that? It's not directly the 100 meter dash, which is why you can't or don't see a fat person run or swim or those things. It's all the things required for the event to happen, okay? So when I talk about a fat person sprinting, I'm talking about, oh my gosh, joints and ligaments and tendons and muscles and this event happened and it's so powerful. Or the marathon, like, yeah, you got to warm up by all means, but you got 26 miles. I want to call myself out. I cannot run a marathon. I don't want to run a marathon. I can barely run a 5K. <laughs> so I want to call myself out. I don't enjoy jogging, running. I don't enjoy distance. And so when we go into the subject of fit versus fat, there's a heck of a lot of fat people out there that are way more fit than I am in that world. Okay, so I kind of want to get a couple of these things out of our heads. Fat is a physical look, unfortunately, but I want you to switch it to bio, bio, biochemical, bio, biological, right? And fit has this huge thing like, oh my God, 
You're so fit because you look something. I know a lot of skinny people that are very, very out of shape, right? So I talked about the marathon runner, talk about the, uh, the uh, sprinter, right? Let's talk football. I love football, okay? Look at your offensive lineman and defensive lineman. Like, look at those guys. They need that fat for help and support and cushion because they are in the trenches. And can you see a 330-pound old lineman? The, the combines or the, the draft just happened, right? They are running. They are jumping. They're sprinting. They're doing all the things in the world. Uh, my first three concussions of my life came from a guy that was 280 pounds. Huge dude. And he gave me my first three concussions because he was just as fast as me. <laughs> oh boy, geez. Fat in a really fun way. We look at the baby. Oh, look at that fat baby. Oh, the baby's parents. A fat baby will sleep better more often than not. A fat baby tends to grow into their body, right? They're going to elongate and grow. And we always say it, right? Oh, you know, your baby's fat right now, but you just wait. They're going to grow into their body, you know? So we look at fat in so many ways, right? In my personal opinion, a woman that has a little fat on the body is more of a luscious, right? I personally like that. So there's so many things I want to get out of our heads about fat and fit, okay? The definition of fat. This is a medical definition from WebMD, which for the most part is a pretty trusty site, right? Medical definition of fat. Notable for having an unusual amount of fat, especially fleshy with super flubbous this is medical, superfluous, flabby tissue that is not muscle. That is the first definition on WebMD of fat. <laughs> really funny, huh? Animal tissue consisting of chiefly uh, cells distended of greasy or oily matter. Oily or greasy matter that is making up bulk. Uh, uh, what's one more fun definition of fat, right? Where'd that thing go? Again, definitions of fat. Uh, having a lot of extra flesh on your body. This is uh, Webster's, right? Having full rounded form. Like, okay, so we'll just talk about fat here a little bit. Definition of fit. Okay, I always find this one kind of funny because I'll give you my little analogy here in a second. Definition of fit, again, WebMD. Acceptable form, or sorry, acceptable from a particular viewpoint. That is the first definition of fit. An acceptable from, acceptable from a particular viewpoint. What the heck? Adapted to the environment so as to be capable of surviving. All right. Put into suitable state, right? It's going to conform correctly to the shape or size. If it doesn't fit, it can change to fit. Okay? These are the definition of fitness. To be suitable for. Okay? To be put into condition of readiness. Applicable. Appropriate. Right? Those are definitions of fit. Uh, I changed my profile picture on Facebook like a month and a half ago, right? I, I know I look fit, okay? Right, Lori? Like, I, I know it's okay. I know it's okay. You know, I look fit. A year ago, I wore a suit and I took a bunch of photos. I re my Facebook profile and Instagram. And I had a bunch of comments. Oh, Chris, you're so fit. Oh, oh you're so fit. Hey, guess what, you guys? And I said this on my last uh, uh, presentation. I have not shared this with many people. I was in the worst physical shape of my life. I was 42. I was in the hospital with an anxiety attack. I had a little high uh, cholesterol because I was eating horrible. I was probably drinking too much. I was sleeping awful, right? I was in the worst shape. I was going to work, just pounding my head against the wall, I dominoed in so many things, but yet... I look fit. So I wanna, I'm gonna trans transition here soon. I want you to get the definition or the mindset of fit and fat, and I'm gonna switch them. And I'm gonna say that fat is a biological thing that we can use for so many other things like growth and health and wellness and fit. Stop look, making people that look good, making them fit, right? Fit, I want you to switch that to something that you can grab and something you can do that you can adapt and you can survive, right? So being fit, right, is I want you to change it to a biological thing of I want to do something about it. Can I change my fitness? Can we use our fat for good things, okay? So that's a big, long start. However, I see so many people that just switch the two things. 
I'm gonna roll on this to some, some stuff. BMI, body mass index. What the world knows as your fat. It has nothing to do with your age. It has nothing to do with your gender and has nothing to do with what you're doing about it. Okay, it's insurance's way to determine morbidity and mortality rates. Are you gonna cost your insurance money or not? All right, so BMI, body mass index. I walk into Talking Rain all the time, do percent body fats. I've done other companies, right? And everybody's like, oh, BMI, BMI, BMI. No, 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 percent body fat. So BMI, it's again, morbidity and mortality rates. The 25.0 or under is your baseline. So when you get off this call, literally type in BMI calculator, BMI calculator, and just see what you are. You're gonna enter your height and you're gonna enter your weight. Now there actually is a calculation on the back end, it's body weight and 703 and blah, 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 but you have to enter nothing else and it's gonna give you a number. If you are under 25, which not many of the world is, that's your baseline. I'm gonna skip between the 25 and 30, right? I wanna to go to the 30 to 35 BMI. The average American is 35.4, <laughs> okay? So I'm gonna give you the stats for BMI of 30 to 35. You are 19% higher risk for arthritis. You're 17% higher risk for heart disease. You're 34% higher risk for type two diabetes. You're 33% higher risk for gallstones. 28% higher risk for hypertension, and 16% higher for stroke. So if you look at your number and you're like, oh, Chris just scared the heck out of me. Like, I got my BMI, and I, what the heck? That's insurance's way of, are you gonna cost them money? So I'm here to educate you. How do you get your percent body fat tested? Percentage of your body that is fat. Well, me, Sorry, Daryl, I'm not gonna fly to Dallas, right? We can, we can figure that out somewhere, right? So uh, how do you do it? Well, you can get a trainer to do percent body fat testing, pinching. There are dunk tanks out there. There's many of them that are mobile. You can go to Bed Bath Beyond and buy the scale, the electrophoresis scale. So you need a tool for percent body fat testing. And I could literally, you could walk into a hundred things I can have 10 trainers and 10 dunk tanks and 10 things and you can have all these things and you can go to every single one and you're gonna have a different number. That's why insurances don't use it. Although it's scientifically a better way to determine your fat and your morbidity rate and all the healthy things that come with it, it's harder to get. So if you want it, cool. Percent body fat testing is based on your gender, your age, your weight, and it has all of these things. And when I pinch you, I pinch eight sites. So all over your body, some trainers do three. I like to do a little bit more. Plus I like to pinch people. It's kind of a, kind of a sadistic thing, okay? Um, there is now a new term that started, uh, oh gosh, 2003 is this finally got defined. Metabolically fit. Describes an individual who may qualify as overweight or obese, yet demonstrates a healthy biometric profile. They are fit. They just happen to be fat. No insulin resistance, normal blood sugar levels, healthy lipids, right? All these things that we talked about when your BMI says that you're obese, right? And you look maybe that you have a little bit of fat on your body, but you can run, you can jump, you can lift, you can do all these things. So again, Sometimes I don't you look at yourself or look at somebody else as being fat. I want you to look at them as potentially being really efficient, right? I am not very cardiovascularly sound. I can run and jump and lift to the best of them, okay? So percent body fat is your percentage of fat. You need a tool, okay? Your stats for that one, I hope I didn't just throw that one away. Your stats for that, okay? So we talked about that 30 to 35 range. Guess what a five foot five female that weighs 155 or five, five foot five person that weighs 155 pounds. Their BMI is in the 30s. But yet I see that every single day just pounding it, just crushing it, right? So again, check it. The uh, percent body fat. Women's essential fat. What you need to survive is 10 to 12%. Men is two to 4%. Ladies, I'm sorry. You look good, 
keep it going, okay? You need fat for other reasons, right? Uh, men also statistically have more heart attacks and more strokes. So there's a, there's a reason that all cholesterol and heart disease and fat and all these things come into play where we store our fat, okay? Men, sorry, a little side note. Men store 60% of the fat between their muscle and women store 60% of the fat on top of their muscle. It's why our bodies exist to store and survive and it's why an overweight male can look fit, okay? But again, the comparison of the five foot, 555 pound person, let's say he or she is 24%. If you're a she, woo, you're in a great spot. If you're a he, you're on the borderline acceptable. So 25% and under for men is what is needed. And then women between 25 and 30 is again, the very similar acceptable range because of what we need to do with our life. Okay, and you can look those things up too. And I can forward you these things later on percent of body fat is percentage of body fat what you have in your body and when you have the right amount of fat you're going to be efficient okay and then your body will digest things better right you're going to have a better chance of not having a stroke and heart disease and all those wonderful things that come along with those things okay so we've been talking quite a bit okay we've done some education we've done some mindset my own personal opinion right hopefully this is not boring you too much why are we talking about these things well, I like to transition the subject into meal planning because you didn't come here to hear me talk about fit and fat and the really good looking person at the pool that's eating carrots and made a really good choice and we're all making fun of it, right? It's, it is kind of funny, right? You go to the pool and you're like, oh man, oof, he or she looks really good. And then you've been there for a couple hours and you see him bring out a snack and you're like, really? You're eating carrots by the pool. Come on, it's Saturday. You're in Palm Springs. What are you doing? They made a choice and they were prepared. When you are prepared, you're going to make better choices. Okay. I already fessed up in the last presentation. You guys, I don't cook. I rarely, rarely cook. But I do eat out and I do eat order takeout and I do order correctly, right? I order the best of my abilities. I don't change people's menus. But when I get my food, I take it and I cut it in half, and I'll talk about these things here in a second. If you eat out, order the food you want to order, cut it in half, and save the rest for tomorrow lunch or tomorrow dinner. That's a great way to control portion size, because part of meal planning is portion control. We all sit at a dinner. I don't go out very much with my clients anymore because they don't like going to Mexican food all the time. That's what I eat. <laughs> okay, but if you are a... a, a, a doing uh you know dinners and stuff which have changed right when you travel and do dinners you're going to eat out get your food order what you want take it half cut it in half eat one half now and eat the other half tomorrow okay if you like to cook and prepare and of course these things can be used for takeout i'll get a little bit closer to these things this is a glad thing you can buy at qfc if your thing fits in there good that's, and of course I can send you pictures of these, right? Right. There's your meal size. That's not very cool, is it? <laughs> right. This is what I get from fresh meals. I'm not here to sell fresh meals. You can do what you want with them, but that's what I use for my stuff. That's what your meal should fit in. Okay, guys and ladies, if you're going to be active and you're going to get after and you need some more gas and tank, this is just a little bit bigger than the other one, right? Just a little bit bigger, right? These are your glad things, okay? If you can put your meal in there, congratulations. Get off the call. Go go do your thing because you're, you're smoking, right? You're doing awesome. Meal preparation. I want your meals to fit in small things if you're looking for physical change, which is probably why you're here, okay? Now, I don't want you starving. Size my hand, I don't have the biggest hands in the world, but the size of my hand is about 12 ounces of meat, okay? And everybody has different hands. My palm is probably four to six, and my whole hand is probably 12. So ladies, I want you four to six ounces of a protein. And gentlemen, I want you eight to 10, maybe 12, depends on your uh, desires, hopes, and dreams. And again, I'm sorry, ladies, uh, the guys get to eat a little bit more, okay? Again, if you're looking for physical change, because we need it to fit in that container. So we've got this size, four to six ounces of protein, meats, if you want meat, tofu, 
And of course, we even talk legumes and those things here soon. If you don't eat meat and I get it, seafood, but the size of my hand is four to six ounces or a palm, the whole thing is 10 to 12, okay? Then I want you to pick two cups of a raw veggie or one cup of cooked veggies. More veg most veggies will condense a little bit, okay? And I want you to pick your veggie, cauliflower, broccoli, carrots, asparagus, right? Vegetables, okay? And I want you to put all of that in there, okay? If you're gonna prepare. If not, use your small plates, not your big plates, because human nature says you didn't get enough food when you look at an empty plate. That's me, <laughs> it's the truth, okay? I want you to fit it in there. Now, did I mention anything else? No, no I didn't. If you want to talk about leafy greens, Chris, I really, 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 really like my salads. Okay, spinach, kale, lettuce, cool. You're gonna get less nutrients in your veggies. You're not gonna get as full and you need quantity. So your two to three cups of your leafy greens, right? Maybe four, right? Be careful on the quantity if you're trying to talk about getting full. So bare bones. Four to six ounces of protein meat, something like that for ladies. Again, eight, 10, 12 for gentlemen. Again, give or take your two cups of raw veggies or one cup to cook veggies. And I want it to fit into this. If you need a filler, starchy things, right? Your whole grains, right? Your crunchy brown uh, uh, quinoas and, um, gosh, my brain's off right now, it just shut off on me. But your whole grain, items are gonna be your fillers. I want that to be about a cup after it's cooked because I want it to fit in that container, okay? So I know I really fast forward, like what the heck, okay? Why? Here's some numbers. When you get the right amount of meat, give or take, you're gonna get 20 or more grams of protein. So what am I talking about? Ladies, four to six ounces of meat, you're gonna get 20 or more grams of protein. I want every male to be 20 or more grams of protein. Somehow, some way. Part of that's on you and part of that's on me when you uh, reach out to me later on. And it's okay if you get up to 30 or more grams of protein if you're gonna do something about it, if you're gonna be active. That's what's gonna happen with those sizes of portions. When you get your veggies, you're gonna be hovering around 30 to 40 uh, grams of carbohydrates from good veggie sources, right? There's your vegetables that I gave you. Now, vegetable, I keep saying vegetables. If you go to leafy greens, you lose a little nutrition, a little bit, and you lose a little calories, but you might get a little more full, okay? I have this debate all the time. Chris, I found this really, really cool snack. It has zero calories and it has none of this. Ha ha, I get to eat it. So you're teaching your body to eat nothing. Oh, okay, right? So most of you probably got in this to make some sort of change or educate why your body responds to things. And I know we're talking about meal planning. I want 20 or more grams of protein per meal. I want 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates per meal. Naturally, you're gonna get five to 10 grams of fat if you're gonna eat animal products. If you want to cook with a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil or those oils, cool, you can cook with some of those oils. A little bit, a little bit. You'd be surprised about how far that oil goes. If it's gooey, if it's tasty, I want it gone. You can add spice. You can add your peppers. Trader Joe's 21 seasoning salute. You can add almost any spice you want. I'm not too worried about the sodium and added products. Sodium in your products. Oh, why does that meat sit on the shelf for three months? Because it has sodium to make it last longer. Oh, I added salt to my food. That's not the sodium that doctors are worried about unless you have heart disease, unless you have super high cholesterol, okay? So portion control, right? You're either gonna eat out, order what you want, cut it in half, or you're gonna make it and prepare yourself. Here we go. You ready? Grocery cart. Okay, drive to the store. <laughs> Grocery cart. You walk the outside aisles first. <laughs> Chris, that's gonna take too long. I gotta go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Well, A, you can't do that anymore with one ways. Right, it really sucks. 
<laughs> I go, now I'm like looking down, I'm like, hey, Dane. My Dane's my six-year-old daughter. Dane, go grab that. I can't walk down the aisle. I blame the six-year-old. So go to the grocery store. I'm going to walk around the grocery store, and you're probably going to get 60 to 70% of your products, right? If it doesn't last long, you're in the perishables and good job, right? I want you to buy your meats. Fishes will always have the most and best protein. You got your poultry, right? Still a good quality, decent quantity, right? You get down into the beefs. I love a steak. Whew. But as I get older, it doesn't like me anymore, right? You get down to the other ones. Again, you're still going to have a good amount of protein. You just lose a little bit of quality. I lost one of my cheat sheets, okay? Legumes, get down into the soybeans, right? Your kidney beans, your black beans. The bigger, the older the bean, the more nutrition in the bean. I love those little red beans. They taste so good. However, you don't get as much nutrition out of them. I didn't say they're bad for you. Okay, 20 or more grams of protein per meal, 20 to 30 grams or more of carbohydrates, you'll naturally get your fat. Chris, that's not enough food. Try it, let me know how you feel, and then you adjust. Chris, I'm going to go run a 5K. I'm going to go work out with you later on. Okay, I always want you to have a 150 calorie protein based snack on hand. Whether Cliff Bar, Luna Bar, Builder Bar, Protein Drink, I'll talk about that one here in a second, right? Uh, apples and peanut butter, good snack, celery, peanut butter, right? I want you to have a 150 calorie protein based snack on hand, especially if you're gonna be active. So your first meal, 300 ish, gentlemen, maybe 500 calories. You might need a snack in the middle of the day. I'm not proposing you have to eat all this stuff. Right? Then I have my 300 to 500 calorie lunch. Maybe I need another snack, right? A protein source is, and like a protein drink or a protein bar, by definition is 160 calories or less and more than 20 grams of protein. I know I'm educating and I think I'm almost done educating. Okay, 20 grams of protein is only 80 calories from protein. 30 grams of protein is 120 calories from protein. Okay, so 160 calorie source, 20 grams is 80 calories. That's half of the calories coming from protein. Okay, one last little thing before we go to questions. Okay, I don't want you to eat within two hours of going to bed. Hey, Chris, I read don't eat after eight. Tom, what time do you go to bed? Nine. Okay, don't eat after seven. Okay, don't eat within two hours of going to bed. When you lay down and relax, blood leaves your intestines, and I'm literally talking like 60% of the blood leaves your intestines, and your body will stop digesting the things in there. So then they just rot. And then you get up the next morning, and you wonder why you feel bloated or gassy, or maybe not. you don't feel 100%, because now that stuff starts moving, and your body starts digesting the stuff that's been sitting there for 12 hours, 10 hours, okay? Can you have ice cream before you go to bed? Yeah, two hours before you go to bed, okay? Uh, what else? Uh, again, we're gonna ask questions here. We're talking about quantity, size matters, right, gentlemen? Size matters, don't let anybody fool you, okay? Quantity plus quality. Can it fit in this glad container with your 20 or more grams of protein? When you get your veggies, your 20 or 30 grams of carbohydrates, cooking with a little bit of oils, right? A little bit of these little things, less goo, spice is your best friend. And you do two to three of those types of meals a day with one to two snacks, 150 calorie protein based snacks and all these things I can email you, okay? I'm not here to sell you and I'm here to answer some questions. Anybody have any questions? I, you know, that's one of my favorite questions. Did you wait till afterwards? I actually, that's one of my favorite questions because one of my best friends in the world who is the head of the DEA down in San Diego, he was an all-American football player. I was on one side, he was on the other side. I caught more touchdowns. Uh, he, he could have a steak, mashed potatoes, asparagus, 
go outside and do his lifting and running and jumping. And I would literally be thrown up in the bushes because I can't handle it. I need a completely empty stomach. So my, your test is try out something, right? But you train at 6 a.m., Tom, and I'll say this, sorry guys, I'm a name drop. Tom trains with me every morning at 6 a.m., okay? Now, if you, if you get out of bed and you're not hungry yet, don't, oh, so does Malia, sorry. You got out of bed and you're not hungry yet, don't eat. But if you got out of bed and you don't eat and then you consistently just like, man, it's 6.30, I really should have had something, then you need to get up and have a little bite. But my recommendation is don't do something with dairy. You guys, I still drink milk. I'm 43. I'm a dairy lover. If you do something with dairy, intestinally it, it curdles and it weighs and it does bad things and you might not settle very well. So a bread style product, something that can saturate and maybe you do half of a cliff bar. Just have a little something in your body. That's a great question because everybody is so different. Yeah. Let me just check the chat here real quick. See any questions? Uh, yeah, okay. So I got another goofy question. I love goofies. Give it to me. No, I mean, you're, I mean, yeah, so yeah, and I, that's a good, that's a good one. I like that because you're going to probably get up and move your body and do other things. Now, are you going to sleep well that night by eating at five and then not eating again? You might wake up starving at midnight. Um, that's a hard one. That's a good relaxing one. I would say maybe have a little snack after the movie. That way you don't wake up completely starved. Um, you know, if you join me for dinner and we have two margaritas and chips and salsa and Mexican food and lay down, you're going to wake up in three hours anyways, not feeling very good, you know. So, yeah. but when your body relaxes, right, and you're in that laying down position, blood just starts leaving your intestines and it goes to your brain, right? It goes to your heart, it circulates throughout your body and you stop digesting. Yeah. All right. Do you recommend that we mix up our proteins for best results? Jennifer, love it. No, I want you to be consistent and I want you to, and if you're talking about protein, well, okay. If you're talking about meat sources, do you want to buy a chicken and a steak and a, do you want to have all those different things? You're going to have a very big shopping cart and a, and a refrigerator that requires a lot of organization, which is awesome. If you're talking about consistently drinking something, eating something, it's better to be more consistent. That way your body digests it better. So if you're talking food, that's up to you and your family and, and mixing it up and having different tastes. So, yes, you just have to buy a lot more stuff. If you're talking about synthetic style proteins, protein drinks, and protein bars, everybody digests differently. Whey protein is technically the cheapest and the most digestible. However, you're going to know real quick if your body likes it. You might feel bloated. You might get the little rumblies and, and the other part. Okay, egg isolate is one of the best proteins because your body absorbs so much of it, not very cost effective and it comes in a little jar and so you gotta buy a lot more of it and so I recommend if you're gonna do it, you know, the packet in your bag, if you're gonna, you know, the daily protein, pick something that your body likes and stick to it. That's my recommendation. Uh, how does, okay, good. And if I didn't answer your question, please let me know. How does stress, let's say from COVID, impact your body? Oh, I love it. And how it digests. Woo, good question. Cortisol. You guys have all heard of cortisol, right? Stress, angst, right? I have a client. I haven't trained. I got home yesterday from Montana and she had to stop in because she's stressing out, man. She is a stress ball and she is completely broken out in hives. Her body is just toxic. So when you stress out, your body creates cortisol and then I get goosebumps. When your cortisol gets created, right? You just start spitting out toxins, right? Ketones and lactic acid and carbon monoxide and everything gets bound. And then your skin can do this and your digestion can do that. Stress, I'm an eater. When I get stressed, I eat and I eat and I eat and then I feel like crap. 
There are people that are stressed that don't eat, but your body's digestive system shuts down. I don't care who you are, right? So you're going to eat, whether it's broccoli or ice cream, your body is not going to digest it very much. Well, how do you get rid of stress? <laughs> you can go for a run, go for a walk, do something, uh, move your body. If you do feel yourself getting stressed and you're craving that ice cream, which I have a great thing at Ben & Jerry's I'm going to have later on. This comes down to exactly how I started the, the meal planning portion of this. When you are prepared and you have better foods available, you're going to make better choices. I'm not saying you can't have the crappy food in your cupboard. But if you're prepared and you have better items, you're going to do better things. Um, you probably want to stay away when you're stressed. You know, red meats, although again, great. Your body just has a hard time digesting them, right? Get your colorful fish. You get more nutrients in colorful fish like salmon, uh, tilapia, right? You get the white fish still has good stuff, but you get a little bit less nutrients. Uh, ooh. Any recommendations of sleep? Actually, sell a night and I thank you. So recommendations of sleep. And it kind of goes with what Tom said. All of you. Now, this is unfair, but it is getting lighter and warmer and all those wonderful things outside. Going for a walk. And I, my ex-wife, she wanted to go for walks every night and I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. If you can go for a walk, a 20 to 30 minute walk between dinner and bedtime, you will be more metabolically sound than you'll ever be in your life. If you did that for a week straight, which is probably what you're seeing in your neighborhood, right? You will sleep better. You will feel better. Uh, it is the best thing in the world and I can't stand doing it. <laughs> However, if you were talking about being metabolically fit, metabolically sound, efficient, right? We talked about that efficiency earlier. Eat dinner, 20 to 30 minute walk, and you'll probably sleep better at night. Now, if you have sleep troubles like I do, and that's just a whole my whole life, right? Melatonin is there, uh, turmeric is there. That's an all-natural anti-inflammatory. More often than not, it's either stress-associated or you have some sort of, you know, angst or stress in your, in your body. Even innate stress, you don't know. Um, sleep is a hard one. Sell my recommendation. Give it a whirl. Challenge my challenge. And I'll even join you. Go for a 20 to 30 minute walk between dinner and bedtime for a week. Got to do it for a week. And then let me know how you sleep. It won't be immediate. Will do. Ooh, I like it. Now remember, I'm giving you guys my professional opinion, right? There's many, many more medical things that could be associated with these things. How do you feel about caffeine and or pre-workout? And I like it. So when I drink caffeine, which I love your tray, I personally, this is not kissing your guys' buns. Trey, in my opinion, is one of my favorites. I'm a, I used to be a rock star person, the, the recovery rock star, not the bubbly rock star, and Red Bull. I would drink several of those a day. I used to drink coffee, right? I get up at four in the morning and I go to bed at 11 at night, right? I just pound it, right? So, I love Trey. <laughs> I love Trey, I know. So, every 16 ounces of Trey, right? 16 ounces, aren't they? Yeah. I want you to drink 32 ounces of water. Are you a kid? What? So every ounce of caffeinated product, I actually got in trouble with this a long time ago. <laughs> yes, I did. Every ounce of a caffeinated product, I need you to drink two ounces of water, right? Caffeine, there's the bean, right? And then there's synthetic. Caffeine is a dehydrant. That's a physical fact. When you drink anything with caffeine, and of course then you add vitamins, right? All the vitamins associated to caffeinated products for the most part, your body absorbs it, absorbs it, absorbs it, but it has to get rid of something so it gets rid of the interstitial fluid. And then you get dehydrated. And it's not that immediate, you know, licking mouth dehydration, it's intracellular dehydration. So double the water. And if you go to the bathroom too much, either decrease your caffeine or increase your water. <laughs> Jennifer, what's your favorite tray? Mine's the blue can. What's the blue can? Um, I can't remember. I got the power punch. I like the power punch. Power punch. That's the red one. Orange one is this. I just like it. I like how it tastes. I, right. I, love, I, I love fusion. Yeah. I'm super, super happy that my team and I are selling that tray now. 
Oh yeah, I hope it's selling because it's it's one of my favorites. I've had a lot of them. <laughs> trying to trying to do everything we can, that's for sure. Good, good. I like it. Anybody else? Meal planning. Uh, they want to look good in the bikini. What month is this? It's June first. You're gonna go on your 40th class reunion or 40th birthday. You want to look good in the bikini. I want those meal plans on point, Tom. I want your bikini ready in 15 days. <laughs> well, what's the phrase? There's two phrases, right? There's either you're fitter, fatter, or an alcoholic, or you're a hunk, chunk, or a drunk after COVID, right? <laughs> Have you not heard those? Yeah, they're either hunk, chunk, or drunk after COVID. You've either gotten fitter, or you've gotten fatter, or you've probably drank it too much. I personally think I've more fit and maybe uh, uh, consumed too much tequila. Uh, for the meal plan, is there a difference among breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Well, clearly you're gonna have different products, okay? This is where it's hard. Eggs, right? You're by nature gonna eat eggs and maybe peanut butter and those things in the morning, right? Per egg, a normal egg, there's varieties of eggs, right? You've got six grams of protein per egg. So it would take three eggs to get 18 grams of protein. My recommendation would be to do two full eggs and one egg white, right? But you can mix in spinach and, and veggies and those things. You can make like kind of like an almond, right? Um, most people drink their breakfast for meal plans, meal replacements, so they can do their protein drink with their yogurt and their protein scoop and right the ice and they blend it up. So I, I hear more people doing meal replacement shakes, uh, smoothies, if you will, for breakfast, lunch, right? You got sandwich choices if you really want them, but does a sandwich fit in this thing? Not very much. Again, I want you to try to get your vegetables and your meat source. So you're probably not gonna bust out a steak for breakfast, but grilled chicken might be okay. You're probably not gonna do salmon for breakfast, um, so mix it up. But, and sell again, I can help you out a little bit. I want you to, I want to challenge yourself a little bit. Here's, here's a cheat sheet for everybody. Google or Bing, 300 calorie meals, 20 grams protein. Don't add a whole bunch of words because you're gonna lose it. Gentlemen, you might wanna go 500 calorie meals, 30 grams of protein. But if you just go 300 calorie meals, 20 grams protein, you're gonna see Women's Health Magazine, you're gonna see probably a lot of magazine articles, right? And that's okay. They have all these meals done and prepared, and I have a bunch of meals I can send you to that give you the ingredients. They give you the, you know, the instructions, and there's this wonderful meal with 300 calories, 20 or more grams of protein. Again, Women's or Self Magazine, they do a fantastic job on meal planning. Women's Health, Men's Health, right? They all have these things. Maybe you don't do Cosmo with Jennifer Aniston in the front of the cover, um, but, you know, because she didn't cook it. She probably ate it. <laughs> yeah, high, food, high five. <laughs> so did I answer your question on that one? And I think, and that's, this is where you get different eating types and, and desires. That's so hard. But if you Google or being 300 calorie meals, 20 grams of protein, you'll see a slew of them. If you want me to email you my four weeks of meal plans, you guys, it's just paper. You would have 12 different breakfasts, 12 different lunches, and 12 different dinners. If you've done my metabolic blitz before, it's in that. Again, it's a piece of paper. I'm going to email you. If you want it, shoot me an email and I'll forward it to you. Um, again, I'm not here to sell you on anything at all. You'd have a lot of ideas. I did all the math for you. You've got your stuff, 300 calories, 20 grams of protein. Hey, Chris, so I'm new to um, all of your classes and everything. So, and this is Jennifer again. Um, so if I was to determine um, how many calories I need to, to reduce my weight, to lose my weight, what's, what's your recommendation? What's the best way I should go about that? <laughs> Jennifer, I love you. Don't think calories after this conversation. I know I've said it a lot. If you can get the video uh, and I can email it to you or Kyoka maybe can email it to you or it's on the litmus. I think as you guys have the, the macronutrient conversation, that's what I want you to think about. So you can send me your details. I got to be careful on how many lines I cross. I want most women between 70 and 90 grams of protein a day. So... Let's just make it an easy number. Go to 70 grams of protein a day and let's start from there. 
I want you 70 to 100 grams of carbohydrates. They're a similar number, okay? Easy math, 70 grams of protein is 140 calories coming, wow, my brain, 280 calories coming from protein. Same number with the carbos. If you are working out, if you're doing the fitness version, you're gonna need a little more carbohydrate. And I'm talking vegetables, right? Even some fruits, carbohydrates is a gas. And then your fat is probably 25 to 30 grams of fat. If you do the math, you're gonna be like, Chris, really? And I'm gonna say yes, because you're gonna have a balanced nutritional meal plan diet, right? So 70 to 90 grams of protein, 70 to 100 grams of carbohydrates, right? And you're naturally, you're probably gonna get the fat, but 25 to 30 grams of fat, start with those. You always need to have a 150 calorie protein-based snack on hand, right? Just in case, especially if you're doing the fitness version. Start with that. Get rid of the calorie thing. I'm sorry. My fitness pal is a group. Okay, so, so I did watch the news. Good. Video this morning, so that makes sense. Good. But, um, and I have all of the emails from the past, so I'll just go back through and send stuff to you. So thank you. You're welcome. And start with that. Today's mindset was more portion control and what it should look like. But if you start with that math, you're huge. It's great, but it's a low number. But you're definitely going to need to adjust. Thanks. Uh huh. That's a great question. Hey, Chris. This is Daryl. Hey, Daryl, buddy. You touched on it a little earlier, but I struggled with the protein drinks before like 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if I, if I reduce the quantity from 12 ounces, 8 ounces. I just really struggle with protein drinks, okay. but I don't like to cook uh, in the mornings. What What do you recommend or suggest I could I could do to supplement the uh, you know for the protein? Mm -hmm. Now, have you tried a vast number of proteins? Whey, egg isolate, um, Vega protein. Have you tried different types of proteins? I have not. No. Okay. Uh, there's twofold. So we can, and if you don't like to cook, right? I don't really want you throwing an aunt raw egg. Um, I, I did that my entire life. It just, you probably shouldn't put a raw egg in your smoothie. Um, but I would empower you to don't buy the big canisters. And maybe if you have a local supplement store, see if they'll give you some samples. Egg isolate, your body digests better than whey. It's just not cost effective and it's small. Uh, Vega protein, huge change in the world for the vegans of the world, right? Plant-based protein. Um, and again, maybe your body reacts differently. If you do what most, and I'll generalize men, most people walk in and they buy the thing on sale and it's really huge because they're gonna do it. I'm gonna drink protein every day. And then you go, ooh, gosh, ugh, ah, doesn't feel very good. So maybe try that egg isolate, uh, Vega protein. I don't know if you guys have it down in, in the South. J Rob, you could probably Amazon it. J Rob um, is another really good protein. Again, it's small and not cost effective, but you're going to digest it better. Um, what time do you get up in the morning? Uh, five o'clock, five a.m. And you're still, you have five hours. So, I, my educated guess is it's, it's not the right protein. Your body doesn't like what you're putting in there. But let's say you try a couple different proteins and it still doesn't work. I, Daryl, I get up at four or five in the morning and I don't put a single thing in my body until noon. I've done that since I was 14. I always got up and I worked out and I went to work and I got busy and I schooled. And it, it was the best situation. I don't know. My, my body reacted better that way. If I eat breakfast, I am on the couch snoozing by 10 a.m. So... It could either be you don't have the right protein or you're, you just shouldn't have anything in your body yet. And so then just stick with your fruits and veggies in the morning and then have a big lunch and a big dinner. Not a big, maybe up your protein to 50 at lunch and 50 at dinner. Well, that's interesting because I, there was a time I never ate breakfast. I never ate anything to your point until maybe 11, 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But my doctor was telling me I should eat breakfast because it's so important to eat something. So I started pulling that. Now, was that a, just a GP, just a normal, like, hey, Daryl, you really should eat breakfast? Or are you guys working on some cholesterol things? Is it more of a, a specialist, doctor? Well, so, some of that, you know, diabetic, and some of mm -hmm. that was, I did have something you said, either, you know, take my medication, I had to have to eat mm -hmm. something before I take my medication. Okay, that's so good. I kind of that. 
So you know what? Again, I'm not a doctor. Eat something small to have your medication, right? Just strawberries, yogurt, uh, something small, something, something that you get you to, you know, the 10, 11, 12 hour, and then have a 50 gram protein lunch and a 50 gram protein dinner. You know, again, non-medically based, you don't have to have breakfast. But if you need to have some food in your stomach for your medication, put a little food in your stomach. Okay, sounds good. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, baby. Um, yeah, so you say you get up like four or five in the morning. When do you normally go to sleep? <laughs> How many hours do you try to get? So, oh boy, fair. <laughs> this is the uh, do as I say, not as I do. Um, I go to, I wake up between four and four thirty, sometimes earlier. Um, and I go to bed between 10, 11, um, sometimes 12. Uh, if I go to bed early, I'll sleep from like 9 to 11.30, and then I'll be awake from 11.30 to 2, and then I fall back asleep. <laughs> so I've had, and that's been my whole life. That's been since I was like 12. Um, so uh, everybody's different. Um, if you, every, should you get eight, eight hours of sleep? Leah, you're a new mom. Is Would it be awesome to get eight hours of sleep? It'd be awesome. I would say if you could average... 50 hours a week, start with that. You might get four, you might get four, you might get four, you might get 10, you might get 10. Um, I don't have an Apple Watch and I hated that my ex-girlfriend and ex-wife had the Apple Watch because that's all they did was the Apple Watch. But the benefit of the Apple Watch is it can track your sleep and there's other sleep tracking devices that are on your iPhone phones. So if you're having sleep troubles, again, been there, uh, get a sleep tracking device. Um, there are cost effective ones, uh, put it by your bed, do all the things you're supposed to do. And then again, that's something that I would have to pass the buck on to somebody else on education on, and then find your sleep patterns. It sounds like you, you have some sleep stuff, which pff, feel ya. Um, you know, play that around of that, but I try to get 50 hours a week. And sometimes a lot of that comes on a Friday and Saturday night. Yeah. Thank you. yeah, but there's lots of sleep apps out there. Anybody else? A nice productive day today, you guys. All right. Again, if you don't. Oh, one more question. Oh, yeah. Meal plan. Uh, you talk about meal plan. Do you keep a record of if we're doing something, you know, weight related or whatnot? Mm. Do you recommend like meal recording or like. Report what you eat, those kind of things? I mean, if you want to, I would personally, so if you were to say, Chris, let's do this thing, and I'm going to bring you on to the client, right? Your first three days, I need you to track what you are eating and when you are eating. And there's a free app called My Fitness Pal, which I told Jennifer to not do, right? I'm not worried about the, the metrics of it all, but it's a great, great, great tool. You're going to track what you eat, when you eat, and it has the largest database in the world. It's free, My Fitness Pal. You're going to track what you eat for three days in a row. And then we can adjust a couple of things on that. But after you get done, I wouldn't recommend tracking everything because it's just redundant. I would say, hey, pick your favorite three dinners, pick your favorite free lunches, and your favorite free three breakfasts, and then have that over a two week period of time. So in 14 days, you've had the same dinner two or three or four times, right? The same lunch two or three or four times. And then you're gonna have a measurable. When 14 days is done, you've been very consistent. You didn't have to write a bunch of things down. You didn't have to have a million different things in your house. And you're gonna know how you feel. You're gonna see and feel your change. And that's the biggest issue that I want you guys to do versus tracking a million things, right? But the be people that, that, succeed, that are more successful, they track what they've done for the three days in a row, then they can adjust, and then they say, okay, here's my favorite things, and I'm gonna follow this for the next two weeks. And then you have a measurable, how you feel, how you look, what changed. Sound good? Good. If you guys want my metabolic blitz, I'm not here to sell you. I'm just going to push send on my email. Serious about fitness at Gmail is mine. It's on the chat thing. Serious about fitness at Gmail. I'm just going to forward you the metabolic blitz uh, meals. There's four weeks of them. There's three breakfasts, three lunches, and three dinners per week. And there's ideas on snacks. 
They're all 300 calorie, 20 gram protein meals. So if you're cooking for you and your spouse, partner, whatever it is, you probably wanna cook for three and you wanna probably do like two thirds, one third, give or take, right? Give or take, I'm just talking simple math, right? I'm a big eater. Uh, and then, you know, more often than not, we have more women uh, on the calls. So 300 to 500 calories is kind of the difference there, okay? If you don't want them, go to your Google Bing, right? 300 calorie meals, 20 grams of protein, or 500 calorie meals, 30 more grams of protein. And again, it needs to fit in that container if you're gonna prepare it. If you eat out, right? If you eat out, order what you want, cut it in half, have half now and half tomorrow. Portion control, quality control. And if it's ready and available, you're gonna make better choices. So just eat half the pizza, not the whole thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Two pieces instead of three. I love it. Nice job, you guys. That was a very productive day.